Hello everyone, we're on chapter 9 and we're on paragraph 29. The decisive factor of an intuitively determined action in any concrete instance is the discovery of the corresponding purely individual intuition. At this level of morality, one can only speak of general concepts of morality, that is, standards, laws, insofar as these result from the generalization of the individual impulses. General standards always presuppose concrete facts from which they can be derived, but the facts have to be first created by human action. And 29 is summarized as follows. The decisive factor of an intuitively determined action in any concrete instance is the discovery of the corresponding purely individual intuition. General standards, that is, general concepts, result from a generalization of the individual impulses and always presuppose facts, that is, they are based on facts and then the generalization is arrived at. Facts have to be first created by human action. Um, so this paragraph, actually the next few paragraphs, Steiner begins to talk about the idea of general standards um, as a high level of morality. Um, he'll argue more about it, but this is sort of the beginning of his argument about why having general standards isn't really the highest level of morality. So that's what he's starting up here in this paragraph. Um, and this paragraph just basically points out that if you're examining an action, what you need to look at is looking at the corresponding intuition. Um, and if you want to create um, a standard, um, a general concept of morality, you look at what um, you look at the generalization of the individual impulse. And that's how you derive your standard. Um, and for Steiner, he's just pointing out that standards um, usually occur after a fact. So, um, and that he says facts are first created by human action. So to clarify that, those key statements, um, like let's think about uh, the creation of cars. They started, you know, working on the cars, how to build them. And then from there they modified, okay, this is what works, this isn't working. And then they modified it and modified it some more. But it's based on first the intuition and then the action. And then you have the standard. Um, so that's what he's talking about in that paragraph is how we get standards. Um, and someone may argue as well that standards sometimes just are already put into place. But if you look at it, um, sometimes a generalization is based on previous experience. Um, for example, I have here, um, if somebody is buying a house and um, they decide to have a budget um, and they realize, okay, this is the maximum we're allowed to spend on the house. This is the principle with which I'm going to try to find a house. But that act, that principle is derived from previous experience, um, you know, say when they had to manage their own money. So that's also an example to show that general standards are usually based on a fact, and a fact is usually created by human action. So we're going to move on to paragraph 30. If we seek out the rules, conceptual principles underlying the actions of individuals, peoples, and epochs, we obtain a system of ethics which is not so much a science of moral laws as a natural history of morality. It is only the laws obtained in this way that are related to human action as the laws of nature are related to a particular phenomenon. These laws, however, are by no means identical with the impulses on which we base our actions. If we want to understand how a man's action arises from his moral will, we must first study the relation of this will to the action. Above all, we must keep our eye on those actions in which this relation is the determining factor. If I or someone else reflect upon such an action afterwards, we can discover what moral principles come into question with regard to it. 
While I am performing the action, I am influenced by a moral maxim insofar as it can live in me intuitively. It is bound up with my love for the objective that I want to realize through my action. I ask no man and no rule, no rule shall I perform this action, but carry it out as soon as I have grasped the idea of it. This alone makes it my action. If a man acts only because he accepts certain moral standards, his action is the outcome of the principles which compose his moral code. He merely carries out orders. He is a superior autonoma, autot automaton, injects some stimulus to action into his mind, and at once the clockwork of his moral principles will set itself in motion and run its prescribed course so as to result in an action which is Christian or humane or seemingly unselfish or calculated to promote the progress of civilization. Only when I follow my love for my objective is it I myself who act. I act at this level of morality, not because I acknowledge a lord over me or an external authority or a so-called inner voice. I acknowledge no external principle for my action because I have found in myself the ground for my action, namely my love of the action. I do not work out mentally wh whether my action is good or bad. I carry it out because I love it. My action will be good if my intuition, steeped in love, finds its right place within the intuitively experienceable world continuum. It will be bad if this is not the case. Again, I do not ask myself how would another man act in my position, but I act as I, this particular individual, individuality, find I have occasion to do. No general usage, no common custom, no maxim applying to all men, no moral standard is my immediate guide, but my love for the deed. I feel no compulsion, neither the compulsion of nature which guides me by my instincts, nor the compulsion of the moral commandments, but I wish, but I want simply to carry out what lies within me. And uh, 30 is summarized as follows. The laws and rules of various people and cultures gives us a system of ethics, which is really a history of morality and not the science of morality. These laws are not identical with the impulses on which we base our actions. We must first study the relation of this will to the action. If someone carries out an action based on moral standards, he is merely carrying out orders. Only when I follow my love for the objective is it I myself who act. It is my love of the action that grounds my action. Um, basically, in this paragraph, it's very long, but... Um, He's pointing out that it's you're not acting in freedom if you're just following commandments, if you're just following moral standards, general standards. Um, if you're you're more f free, if you're doing what you feel compelled to inside, um, if you're following your love for an action, and and that is what he is talking about in this. You know, you have an idea, and that is a an idea usually born out of, of love and that is what is good. Beginning of this paragraph he makes an important point. Um, he says if we seek out the rules underlying the actions of individuals, peoples, and epics, we obtain a system of ethics which is not so much a science of moral laws but a natural history of morality. And that's really what a general stand if you're searching for general standards are it's really just a history of things and it's not necessarily the science um, and what Steiner his whole book here is basically about the science of morality um, and the science involves you know an individual following their intuitions um, one qu question I came up with is um, what if you're doing a new activity you know how do you know that you love it um, and basically, if you're curious to do something, that is sort of a positive um, emotion or whatnot. Um, and that also is something that is good to have your intuitions lead to um, because you're following what you feel compelled to, which is what curiosity is, because I'm a very curious person and I was just pondering this whole concept, you know, because how do you know you love something until you do it, but it's, it's your idea that you think, you know, that you're curious, that you love, you think, you know, and it's not until you do it, and then that's where you gain more insight into whatever your action is. So that's all we're going to cover for today. Have a good day. Bye.